Hi everyone and welcome to this video where we're going to cover some different microphones that we might use when capturing any found sound. So there's tons of different microphones out there but we're going to cover the main ones and just to give you an idea of the differences between them and why you might use one over the other. So all microphones are known as a transducer and what this basically means is to transduce something is to change it from one energy to another. So a microphone is changing it from uh, sound pressure energy and then that's getting transduced into electrical energy which we can then use inside our DAW or software or play it back through any sort of digital system. So that's what a microphone's doing and it does that using a little diaphragm and this is essentially just a little bit of metal um, and think of this like a little plate that moves back and forth when the uh, sound pressure or when the sound hits it then it gives it some room to move and as it moves back and forth that's then transduced into electrical energy which we can then read. So the two main types of mic is we have the condenser microphone and we have the dynamic microphone and generally speaking condenser microphones they've got more of a delicate more of a lighter um, diaphragm and dynamic mics have got a slightly more sturdy either larger diaphragm or just one that moves slightly less so they're harder to damage. So in general, because of this, this means that condenser mics are good for more high frequency stuff and things like vocals, uh, whereas dynamic mics are better for the mid to low frequency stuff and things that's going to be much, much louder because they're harder to damage. So things like kick drums, any sort of really loud, high SPL sounds, then you're going to want to use a dynamic mic. Dynamic mics don't need to be powered, however condenser mics do need to be powered. And basically the reason for that is dynamic mics, the diaphragm is so large or it's large enough that when it moves, that voltage is enough for us to be able to use straight away. Whereas a condenser mic, because it's only got a small diaphragm, it would need to be amplified, so we need phantom power. So we've now covered the main two categories of microphone, which is condenser mics and dynamic mics. And as I've mentioned, you can also get different sized diaphragms for your condensers and your dynamics as well. So all of the different mics fall into these categories. And there's a lot of other little things and nuances that changes from mic to mic, which is going to be important, especially when we're doing things like recording found sound. Or maybe we're in the studio and we need to be able to uh, isolate a particular sound and reduce the noise floor or not be able to pick up the ambience that's going on around us. So the way we can do that is by having a good knowledge of the EQ and the responsiveness, uh, the fidelity of our microphones and being able to set the input level right so we don't pick up a whole load of noise from the noise floor and ambience around us. And most of this is done choosing the correct polar pattern. The microphone's polar pattern can be thought of as its map of how it's going to pick up or how sensitive it is to different frequencies. And in some cases, you can actually change the polar pattern on a single mic, but most mics just have a set polar pattern. So the main polar patterns are cardioid, which means it's going to pick up from the front of the mic, so you aim it where you want to hear, and it's going to reject most stuff from the back. We've then got super cardioid, which is exactly the same as cardioid, but it's a little bit more precise. Um, however, it does pick up sound from directly behind the mic as well, but it is going to reject stuff to the side a little bit better than a cardioid. We've then got omnidirectional, and that's got equal sensitivity all the way around. So things like lav mics um, and some room mics and things that are going to pick up ambience, then these are going to be omnidirectional. And then we've got a uh, figure of eight mic, which is thought of as bidirectional. And these are usually mics like ribbon mics or uh, large diaphragm microphones. And these have got a whole host of different sort of uses, but the main one would be something like trying to pick up a very uh, distinct mid and side sig uh, signal so you'd use a super cardioid or a cardioid for the mid and then you'd have a figure of eight which is going to pick up the two sides. We've now covered the basics on the different types of microphone and their characteristics being that dynamic and condenser mic and the only real exception to this is ribbon mics and these are high-end studio mics that you're probably unlikely to see unless you're working in a decent studio and these don't fall into either of these categories because ribbon mics are just simply a bit of aluminium ribbon and they're very easy to damage, but it's not the sort of mic that you'd be using for found sound. But just to let you know, they are the exception to the rule.
So now looking at different types of microphone in a field recording and found sound aspect, then it completely depends on your budget, how much field recording you're going to be doing and the quality of sound that you're looking for. So in most cases, if you're just starting out and you only want to record a few little bits of audio, then you'll probably be fine using your iPhone mic. Bear in mind, this is a very low quality microphone. It's not going to pick up a lot of the ultra highs and the extreme low end. However, you are going to be able to record with it. But if you want something a little bit better, if you want to record in stereo with a much higher quality signal, then I suggest you get a peripheral microphone that you can plug into your iPhone. And the benefit of this is it's still not a lot of stuff to carry around. You're not having to carry a big mic or a sound recorder. But at the same time, you are going to get a much better signal because of the quality of the mic that you're plugging into the iPhone. As well as that, you can also use a contact mic. And these are used for attaching to the uh, resonant sound source or whatever you want to record. So you could attach it to any sort of surface. Uh, a lot of people use these for things like uh, guitars or maybe you want to record something strange that's outside maybe you want to attach it to a fence or a wall or something like that could be absolutely anything and then the contact mic is going to pick up the sound next we've got lav mics and lav mics traditionally are used when we're recording things for film and tv so we can attach these when we're interviewing someone we can put it on their collar and it's going to pick up their voice as a sound source and it's going to be nice and clear because the lav mic has a omnidirectional uh, polar pattern so it's going to pick up everything around but because it's quite a small mic it doesn't really extend that far so it's not going to pick up a great amount of ambience it's just going to pick up their voice which is very close to the microphone but don't let this hold you back with how you want to use it you can use that in any way you want to pick up sound you could use it more like a contact mic if you wanted to or you could just use it because it's going to have a slightly different sound to it than using a standard microphone the next type of microphones are the handheld recorders, which are absolutely brilliant for found sound and field recording. And companies such as Tascam and Zoom do a really good job of doing these for a fairly good budget. And we can just carry these around with us. They're powered usually by AA batteries. Sometimes you get them in mono, but in this case, the one that I'm going to be using is a stereo mic. So we've got a left and a right microphone. And we can just go around, record stuff using these, which have got a real nice high sensitivity, really nice sound to them. And then we can store that within the recorder and then we can rename that and do a few other things straight from the recorder and then load that up onto a computer. The final type of mic I want to talk about is the shotgun mic. And this isn't really used in the studio very much. It's all about things like sound recording outside and field recording when we've got a lot of loud sounds around us and we need to focus in on a very particular point we'd use a shotgun mic because of its design it's got a long interference tube and that's going to reject any of the sound which is off the axis and it's only going to pick up the sound directly where we're pointing it so this is used quite a lot for things like field recording so now that we've done a quick rundown of all of the different mics you're likely to see inside and outside of the studio and ones that are good for field recording you can see that we're entering here at a budget level and as we increase the budget we're going to get much more expensive and much more high quality microphones. However, at this stage, there's absolutely no need to be spending a great deal of money on this. As long as you've got a half decent field recorder for maybe 70, 80 quid, then there's no reason why you can't capture absolutely brilliant found sound to use in your productions.